Okay, so now I thought that in this last video I could go over uh, the tracking of the radio label for this category over here, which is carbons one and six, which uh, I said was that harder category. So again, if we radio labeled uh, glucose at carbon one or carbon six, what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up getting that radio label on this methyl group on pyruvate, okay? And if we look at this table over here, we're saying that the ultimate fate of the carbons in the TCA cycle is that 50% is going to be lost to CO2 by isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase on the third cycle. An additional 25% is lost on the fourth cycle. An additional 12.5% is lost on the fifth cycle, and so on and so forth. So basically, after the th or starting at the third cycle and every cycle thereafter, what we're doing is we're losing half of our radio label and we're increasing half of that radio label. So for, not that we're increasing half of that radio label, but we're losing half of that radio label. And then on the next step, we're losing another half of that radio label. So in total, like after the fourth cycle, we're losing 75%. Then on the next one, again, we're gonna be losing 87.5% and so on and so forth. So the, the percentages, even though it looks like it's decreasing, what we're doing is we're adding that percentage to the running total of total carbon or carbons that we're losing in terms of CO2, okay? So let's see how this works out. So again, in this case, we're gonna start off with the methyl carbon being radio labeled and for the sake of this problem i'm just going to say that 100 percent of it's going to go through pdh and again i'm going to emphasize that the percentages matter on the wording of the question and how the study questions ask it or how it's going to ask in the exam so you have to read the wording of the exam but i'm just going to assume that 100 percent of my pyruvate molecules right now are starting off being radio labeled at this methyl carbon okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to acetyl coa and again we saw that the methyl group will stay the same on both and I'm just gonna now go through the steps. So again, we got this two carbon acetyl-CoA combining with this four carbon oxaloacetate to form the six carbon citrate. Again, you look at the OH group because the OH group in this case is moving down. We know that these four carbons are gonna be the four carbons from oxaloacetate, okay? And again, this is the general rule. The OH group always moves to the side of carbons from oxaloacetate. So Anytime you see the OH group move down, you'll know that these four carbons are from oxaloacetate. If instead you would have saw the OH group move up, those four carbons at the top would have been from oxaloacetate. I'm just repeating this in case someone's just watching this video and skipping the previous video, okay? So now we got this, and now we're gonna know that, okay, so these bottom four are from oxaloacetate, so the top two are gonna be from citrate. Now if we're comparing this acetyl-CoA, these two carbons with this two carbons, you can see that this carbon over here is bonded to two oxygen, or it's a double bond to oxygen and it's bonded to sulfur. So over here, we're basically making three bonds to oxygen. So it's like the same kind of oxidation state, okay? Or you could just say like it looks most similar because it has bonds to oxygen. Um, and in this case, the CH2 group over here, it's the same thing as the CH3 group. So if we were radio labeling uh, the methyl group right over here, what we're gonna say is that we're gonna have our radio label end up so let me keep the color coding consistent. We're gonna have this radio label end up on this methyl group over here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the radio label, keeping it at the top, okay? We're gonna keep it at the top and keep going around. And remember, we said that uh, this is the key second area. Remember, there are two key areas that you have to understand. First is this part, putting together acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate to form citrate. The second key area is that succinate, because remember, succinate is symmetrical. So now if I want you guys to think about it like this. Remember in the previous video, we said that if we closed our eyes and we flipped over the molecule, we couldn't tell the difference between this carboxyl group and this carboxyl group. And that's why our signal split for the carbons two and five. So now I want to ask you guys a question. Well, if we have the radio label on this like CH2 group and I flip the molecule, could you tell the difference between this CH2 group versus this CH2 group? No, you won't be able to, right? And that the same thing goes because whenever we're at, we're gonna end up adding water to this, uh, to fumarate, we're gonna be able to either add the water molecule again to either this side or to that side. And th that's why we're, we could either have the water molecule directly be added to our label or it could be added to the other carbon near our label. So that's why we basically say that our signal's splitting at this step over here, okay? So if we, again, for the sake of this problem, I'm just starting out with 100%, so all these are 100. So what's gonna happen over here is our signal's gonna split 50 and 50 between the two inside CH2 groups. 
And we're just gonna go like this and continue on. Okay, and we're gonna continue on. And we're gonna continue on. Okay. And we're gonna end up right over here with the middle two carbons again being labeled 50-50. Okay, so that was our first cycle. And now to keep tally, I'm just going to, I'm gonna go to, I guess a red circle for second cycle. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to the second cycle. And now what we're gonna do in this case, again, remember, we're this is the key area that you have to understand. We're combining two carbon acetyl-CoA with four carbon oxaloacetate. Because again, the OH group moves down uh, in aconitase, and we see the OH group on the bottom in isocitrate, we know that those bottom four carbons are going to be from oxaloacetate. So in this case, we know that those bottom four carbons are from oxaloacetate, so we're just gonna superimpose this picture onto here, okay? So effectively what we're doing over here is we're gonna see our radio label right over here and right over here. So it's gonna be 50-50. And we're just, and I'm still using the old thing. Sorry, I should change it to circles because we're now on our second cycle. And I realized that this is from the previous cycle. Okay, so now we got 50-50, okay? So remember, the two, the four carbons are gonna to go to the bottom four and then we're just gonna superimpose that image and we see that it's gonna be these two carbons over here, okay? And you can kind of see it with the color coding too, but I'm just gonna keep going with 50-50. Then we're gonna go over here and go 50-50. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna see 50-50, okay? Maybe I should erase a little bit of this, or it's fine. Okay, we're gonna keep going now. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see better, okay? So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say now it's 50-50, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see that it's, again, 50-50. Now, you're gonna to say to yourself, well, look at what just happened here. There's something special happening here, okay? Well, it depends how you define the word special. But if you look at this, right now, as it stands, we're saying that we have 50-50 split between the carboxyl group and the CH2 group. Well, if you remember from the previous example, we said that the CH2 group, you couldn't tell the difference between the CH2 groups if I flip the molecule, right? So this effectively, what we're doing is we're taking that CH2 group and that signal can split to the other CH2 group. So it's gonna be, this 50 is going to split to 25 and 25, okay? And then the same thing happens for the carboxyl group. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit. And same thing happens for the carboxyl group. So let me erase this, okay? Let me erase this. So we're saying that again, it's gonna be 50-50 like this. And remember, this one is the same as this one, and then this one is the same as this one, right? They're all, it, it's all completely symmetrical. So that means that this radio label is gonna split into 25 and 25 across these two. So instead of 50-50, it's gonna be 25-25. And then this one is going to split with this one, and it's gonna be, again, another 25-25. So each signal that was 50% is gonna split with another carbon, and it's gonna, they're all gonna become 25-25-25-25. So now actually all of our carbons are gonna be radio labeled 25% each, okay? And remember, when we were talking about, I talked about in the previous video in case you didn't catch it, when we're talking about uh, that a signal splits, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're physically splitting a carbon molecule and having a quarter of a radioactive carbon. It means in the, the average, in, an, in a population of succinate molecules, 25% of them are gonna have the radio label on the carboxylic acid, at the top, 25% of them are gonna have it on the CH2 group, the 25% of them are gonna have it on this CH2 group, and the other 25 is gonna be at the bottom carboxylic acid, okay? Um, watch the previous video if you wanna see exactly what I say with the radio label split, okay? We got 25, 25, 25, 25, and now we're just gonna go all the way to the end because all of our things are radio labeled. So I'm just gonna leave it off over here. So I'm just gonna put over here all 25%, okay? So we have all of them radio labeled 25%. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next cycle. So here we go. We're gonna go to the third cycle, okay? And now again, the key here, thing here is that we're now combining our four carbon oxaloacid with two carbon acetyl-CoA. Again, you're looking at that OH group. And uh, the key here again is that we're gonna say that those bottom four carbons on citrate are going to be the carbons from oxaloacetate, okay? So again, all of them are 25%, so I'm just gonna superimpose this and we're just gonna do all 25. You could just put 25 four times, but I'm just gonna do all 
Okay. Then we're going to go again like this, and we're going to go all 25. Okay. And then notice again, remember how we said on this step, what's happening is that if we count the carbons, so I might have to erase a little bit, or yeah, let me just let me just erase a little bit in case you guys want to see what's going on. So if we're counting the carbons here, and I'm just going to start off with maybe a little bit of black. So we're going to go like this. Notice how if I start counting the carbons, we're going to go one, two again, one, two. At this third carbon right over here, we're losing this carboxyl group. So that means that we lost 25% of our signal as a carboxyl group, okay? Or, or not as a carboxyl group, as a carbon dioxide. So now if I go over here and I put the remaining labels, what's going to happen is we just, we still have three triangles and we're going to now have 25, 25, and 25 still. And remember, you don't redistribute the percentages, you just leave them as is, okay? So now we have 75% of our radio label remaining, we lost 25%. We're gonna go to the next step over here. And notice again, we're losing another CO2 group, and it's actually this bottom CO2 group because we no longer have that there. So again, we're gonna lose another 25% here, okay? And now what we have left is we have this group radio labeled and this group radio labeled, but now they're 25 and 25, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next step. And we're going to have the bottom two radio label 25 each. But hey, we now have the same problem again. Now it's, remember, on the previous cycle, it was 50 and 50, and we split it 25 across all of them. In this case, now it's 25 and 25. And because, again, this carboxyl group is the same as this one, this carboxyl group and this CH2 group is the same as the other CH2 group, what we can say, so we can basically say, so because these two are labeled and they're actually 25 each, so if I put a 25 and a 25, because they're the same, we're going to split it across all four carbons yet again, and now it's going to be 12.5, 12.5, 12.5, and 12.5. So now instead of it all being 25, it's going to be all 12.5, okay? And I want to direct your attention to something here. So notice we're on our third cycle. And we just lost 25% of our radio label on isocitrate dehydrogenase, another 25% on alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase for a total of 50%. Okay? So if we go back to our table over here, notice how we said that 50% of our radio label is going to be lost as CO2 by isocitrate and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase on our third cycle. Okay? And that's exactly what we saw. And we still have 50% of our radio label remaining. And uh, as we can see at, on the succinate molecule, it's going to there. It's each carbon is going to have 12.5% of their carbons, or 12.5% of your radio label is going to be on each carbon. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see the same pattern keep occurring again and again and again. Okay. So what I mean by this is now when we get to the top oxaloacetate over here, so remember now they're all again labeled. So it's now going to be all 12.5%. We're gonna go through another cycle and I, it's, gonna have, it's gonna have too much to draw on one thing, but I want you guys to understand. So now that they're all 12.5%, what's gonna happen on the fourth cycle, so let me just maybe do, I'm running out of colors here, so. Okay, so on the fourth cycle, again, all of them are radio labeled. They're gonna go through citrate, then isocitrate, then all the way over here. And again, as we're going through isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, we're losing, again, two of our CO2s. So that means that we lose 12.5% here and another 12.5% over here. So that we lose a total of 12.5 plus 12.5 is now 25% is getting lost. And again, we're gonna ha only have our bottom two carbons radial labeled. So that means that because our bottom two carbons are radial labeled, they're gonna, again, split across all four of our carbons. And I know you can't really see it, but now it's going to be all, so each carbon, because our radio, each 12.5 is going to split into 6.25. So they're now going to be all 6.25% each, okay, for each of our carbons. But again, notice how in this cycle, the fourth cycle, we lost 25% of our radio label. And notice how, again, according to the table, 25% of your radio label is going to be lost um, on the fourth cycle. And if the, the beauty of this carbon being radio labeled is that every cycle that you go after, so now what we're going to do again is it's, we're going to lose the next half on the, on the fifth cycle, and we're going to then split it again to everything being 3.125%.
and then it's going to go to one point whatever percent. So the this is why I think like this this one it it just goes on forever in that each cycle we're like decreasing the amount of radio label by half, um, and then ho over time we're going to eventually have it near zero. But it's going to basically it takes very many cycles. Okay, and generally on your exams you're not going to be asked to go more than like a couple of cycles, but it's useful to understand that this just this process never ends. It's always halving and halving again and halving again and halving again. Okay.